Happy Freedom America Day, everybody, and welcome to Chemical Distractions. Today we're doing a video about fireworks, but to start off, let's do a little experiment. You won't say! You won't say! Oh yeah, oh, uh, fireworks. <laughs> they, they go boom, right? But have you ever wondered how exactly that works? There's two basic types of explosives, high explosives and low explosives. And believe it or not, the size of the explosion actually doesn't have anything to do with whether or not it's a high or low explosive. They just mean different things. So the term high explosive usually refers to a relatively pure compound that undergoes a quick rearrangement into a number of very hot gases. These high explosives are usually not a mixture of two different chemicals, but actually just one chemical by itself. Once these compounds undergo their little rearrangement into gases, the hot gas molecules come off and they sort of heat up the surrounding molecules. And when they hit them, it sort of creates this chain reaction that leads to the whole thing going. Now, high explosives usually come in many different flavors. There's TNT, C4, nitroglycerin, but all these high explosive compounds usually sort of like to contain nitro groups. And this isn't a coincidence. These nitro groups are really good at making things go bang because these nitrogens and oxygens attached are able to react with the rest of the molecule to make a whole bunch of gases. The common gases that are formed are things like water in the form of steam, um, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. When these really stable molecules are formed, there's usually a really big release of energy, especially with things like nitrogen, because when nitrogen bonds with itself, it creates the all-coveted triple bond. So when all these really stable gases are made, there's a huge release of energy. And this massive sort of release of energy makes the gas molecules go even faster. And if you understand how states of matter work, you'll know that gases really like to just sort of spread out, as opposed to solids where they really like to stay confined. So when the solid transitions into the gas, the expansion with all the heat and all that stuff just sort of big explosion. Now let's talk about low explosives. Low explosives are things like gunpowder and flash powder. And these are pretty much what makes all of consumer fireworks. There's a few reasons they don't put high explosives in consumer fireworks. Um, you know, one, cost, two, um, you could just sort of take the high explosives out and then you'd have a whole bunch of high explosives. And uh, for some reason, the government doesn't think that you should have a whole bunch of high explosives. Now, low explosives are kind of similar to high explosives, except for, you know, they're completely different. <laughs> low explosives are usually made up of a combination of two different compounds, and they're sort of very thoroughly mixed together. Because these different compounds are separate, they don't like to mix together as well and form as quick of a reaction as a single molecule rearranging itself. So what this means in practice is, if we take something like gunpowder and we try and light it on fire, you'll see there's no boom. But, so what's the deal? I thought it was a low explosive, how is there no boom? I, isn't it used in fireworks and stuff like that? Those definitely go boom. Well, what you're witnessing here is a process called the deflagration. Things like gunpowder, they burn very quickly, but not quickly enough to sort of break the sound barrier. They don't blow up like C4 does. So in order to make a low explosive, what we have to do is we have to contain the gases in some sort of pressure vessel. To show this off, I'm gonna take apart a firecracker and I'm going to light it. And you'll see, well look, it, it doesn't really do anything. It just sort of deflagrates. Well, if we take the firecracker and we sort of leave the shell on, then the deflagration happens, the gases are produced, and they build up in the shell to the point where it can no longer handle all that pressure. And mm, that's cool and all, but what if we want more boom? Spoken like a true American. 
If we make the pressure vessel stronger, it'll be able to hold more pressure, build up more of a bang before it sort of explodes. So here you can see we have basically the same firecracker, but this time it's in a little plaster case. This little plaster case makes it a lot stronger, so a lot more pressure can build up. If we compare the two, you can see the one with the case there sort of blows up more. It, it maybe is a little hard to tell, but if you listen, you can definitely hear the difference. There's a lot bigger bang. So what if we took a super strong pressure vessel and we made it out of like steel and we just sort of packed it in with gunpowder or some sort of low explosive and then we just sort of tied it off and then we lit the fuse. What would happen? Well, you would get... Yeah, see, that's a bit of a problem. With fireworks, you want the explosion to be big, right? So, you know, stronger casing. But the thing is, you can only really make it out of very sort of soft things like paper, because when paper explodes, it just sort of throws little pieces of paper everywhere. As opposed to um, steel, when it explodes, it throws um, razor sharp pieces of steel in every direction. Okay, so gunpowder plus pressure vessel equals boom. So, how do you explain this? To explain how this works, I'm gonna take apart a mortar and I'm gonna show you the insides and this will sort of help explain how exactly it works. What happens at first is the fuse sort of comes down into the bottom and then it goes into this little charge of black powder. What this does in the tube of the mortar is it sort of creates a gun. It's basically a gun. The black powder at the bottom goes whoosh, and it creates a lot of gas really quickly, which sort of launches the ball up into the air. Once the ball gets launched, there's a little tiny fuse you can see here that slowly burns as it goes up into the air. Eventually, once it sort of reaches its peak height, the fuse will be done burning, and then it reaches the middle, and it ignites all of this flash powder inside of there. So the flash powder sort of goes inside the little ball here and the pressure that builds up inside of the ball gets so great that eventually it bursts and all of these little tiny balls in here are what are called stars they're basically little balls of different metals and things that sort of burn to create metal oxide sort of like thermite but depending on the type of metal it creates different colors so that's how a firework fire works.